My name is Allison. I'm coming to you from Stone Zoo inside one of our most fun exhibits. And today's Zoo to You is brought to you by the U College Fund and the Investing Plan and NEFA. So, we are in an exhibit that is actually one of our mixed species exhibits. Some of you may know it, but we have three different kinds of animals in this exhibit. One is our lovely little guy, Fiesta the Sloth. We have also three red-rumped agoutis who are skittering around in here as we're filming. Um, I'm with Jen and Brian from the Education Department, and maybe we can get our eyes on one of the agoutis there. Um, I'm actually going to give them some of their diet this morning, which might help keep them occupied while we're talking about siesta. So one of the things that the agoutis get to eat, and just for them, is avocado. And I'm just going to put that on the ground, and hopefully it will occupy them for a little bit of time. They are a little skittish, and we don't want to interrupt their day too much. And we're going to talk a little bit more about siesta and how we take care of our sloths here at Stone Zoo. Um, you may be hearing in the background some of our animals from our other exhibits. I think if you hear some screeching, those are our macaws. Uh, that's what they do. So it, we apologize in advance for the noise. So, this right here is Siesta. Many of you might know the other sloths that we have, which are Nero and Lunesta, and they are Siesta's parents. And one question I wanted to address right off the top is a lot of people ask, why does Siesta live apart from Nero and Lunesta? And there's a couple reasons for that. So, Siesta is about a year and a half old. He was born on June 27th in 2019. In the wild, most sloths would leave their mom at about 9 to 12 months old. Sloths are generally solitary creatures, and they live by themselves in the wild, while Nero and Lunesta have been together for many, many years, and they're sort of like sloth couple goals. That's really unusual. Most of the time, they're going to be by themselves. So by the time Siesta got to be nine months, 12 months, you can see he's really kind of a big guy. And he got too big to still stay with mom and dad. And they let him know that it was time for him to go out and basically get his own apartment. So he came over here to live with the tamarind monkeys, who are not with, out, with us right now, and the agouti. And we're going to see this morning if we can get Siesta maybe to wake up a little bit with some food. So what I have here is representative of what Siesta would eat in his diet. So we've got, we've got collards, we've got kale, romaine lettuce, we have some sweet potato, some apple, some carrots, hard-boiled egg, which happens to be Nero and Lunesta's favorite treat, and we have what are called leaf eater biscuits. And these are basically a supplement for a lot of our herbivores that has lots of vitamins and minerals and they're low in sugar. So that just makes a well-rounded diet. So <laughs> while sloths like siesta do tend to sleep 16 to 18 hours a day, they will generally wake up for some food. So let's see if siesta would like to wake up. Hi, little guy. Siesta. So they don't have the greatest eyesight, but they do have a good sense of smell. Would you like to eat something, Siesta? Here we go. Oh, I don't know if you can see those teeth. Sometimes Siesta might just fall asleep with that sweet potato. I think he's also kind of processing that there are three people in his exhibit right now. Oh, I think he might be a little interested. Unlike Nero and Lunesta, Siesta really likes to feed himself. Oh, I think it's, it's snooze time. <laughs> snooze time with Siesta. <laughs> He's, I guess, not ready for prime time early this morning. So, Allison, real quick, since yeah. we were talking about food, yes. uh, we had a question come through from sure. Katie wondering what are Siesta's favorite foods? Does he have a particular favorite? So I was just talking with another one of the keepers this morning about how it's funny that Siesta does not go for the hard-boiled egg as much as he does, in my experience, 
with the carrots, the sweet potatoes, uh, and the apple. So I tend, when I come in first thing in the morning, talking about how we take care of our sloths, one of the things I like to do is give him a little snack in the morning to distract him when he's awake <laughs> from the other things that I do in his exhibit to take care of him and the other animals in here. So one of the other things I wanted to address before I get into how we take care of siesta is you'll hear perhaps Brian or Jen or I refer to siesta as him, but sometimes as her. That's because we don't actually know um, with a certainty whether a siesta is a male or a female. Uh, with a lot of animals, you might be surprised to learn, it's uh, not always easy to tell visually the sexes apart. Uh, sloths have cloacas, so the male and the female actually look very similar in terms of their cloaca. So we don't actually know the sex yet. But we have been told that in a couple of months, Siesta is going to have a medical exam, just a routine care exam. And at that point, we're going to learn for sure Siesta sex. So if you hear us refer to, <laughs> to Siesta as both male or female, you'll just have to put up with us. Some of us think Siesta skews more female. Some of us think male. But for right now, he's not answering to either. So, <laughs> so anyway, just if you have any questions about that. But speaking of diet, so I think there are basically four things that I do to take care of Siesta. One is to feed him. Two is to clean to make sure that his environment is safe and clean for him. Three is to observe him to see if there's anything that I might need to address in terms of his health and well-being. And the fourth is enrichment. So is there anything I can do to enrich his daily experience? So we've already talked a little bit about what he eats. Um, sloths, as you might be able to guess, are generally nocturnal. They do sleep a lot. So in the morning, I do like to give him that little snack, but in the afternoon is when he'll get his full diet. I don't know, Jen, maybe could you hand me, let's do a trade-off, because he doesn't seem to want to eat this morning. So maybe Brian can get a shot of this. So this is what their feeder buckets look like for the sloths, and there's a specific place in the exhibit where we're able to basically just hang this over one of the branches, and Siesta will eat at his leisure whenever he wants throughout the night, and in the morning when I come in, I pick it up and I make sure that he's eaten, and I take note of you know if there's a lot of food left or if it looks like he's eaten everything. So that's one way that I can tell and monitor you know, how he's doing. And his diet that we feed him here very much mimics what they would eat in the wild, which is a lot of plants, some fruits. They live up in the trees in the rainforest in South America. So he might also eat eggs that he finds. Probably not hard boiled in the wild, but he'll eat those raw eggs for protein. So that's why we feed him what we feed him here. So I think that kind of covers the diet issue. So I want to talk a little bit about cleaning. So this is a mixed species environment. So one of the things we always want to do is pick up any waste that the animals might have dropped on the ground. We want to clean up, you might have seen some of the straw that the agoutis use for bedding, and the agoutis also tend to chew on the wood and leave little wood chips. So we want to clean all that up and make sure the floor is nice and safe. But I've got a trivia question. I don't know if anybody who's watching might know this answer, but Everything about sloths is slow, even their metabolism. So does anybody have any idea how often, how many times, say in a week, a sloth might come down out of the trees or down off their perch to go to the bathroom? It, the, the answer might surprise you. I'll give you a hint and say cleaning up after siesta is a lot easier than cleaning up after some of our other animals in this exhibit. But let's move on while we're talking about that. Um, one of the other things that we do to take care of siesta in, a, in an exhibit like this is to hose off the floor. Now sometimes siesta enjoys the hose and sometimes he doesn't. And I'm going to try to see very gently if siesta is going to wake up when I turn the hose on. I have found, in my experience, that siesta does not really enjoy when the hose is on full blast. 
I think the noise of the water scares him. And of course, right now my hose is tangled and I don't have. <laughs> Jen, maybe could you try to turn the nozzle for me? Thank you so much. There we go. So when the nozzle is on full blast, like I might do to clean the floor. Oh, someone's waking up to clean the floor. Um, siesta sometimes will follow along. There's different kinds of levels of perching in the exhibit. And sometimes he'll actually ask for a drink from the hose. And he'll use his, one of his hands to kind of come over and draw that hose into his mouth. And he'll take a little drink. But right now, I think he's going to focus on that sweet potato and being generally adorable. And we have had some good guesses come through. Oh, have you? How often? Yeah, Christy, Tim, Heather, and Tina all said once a week. Once a week. That's a good um, guess. Lauren said once a week, but her four-year-old Colin <laughs> says 12 times. <laughs> good guess, Colin. Very good guess. So I think some of you may have been watching our, our videos because the answer is once a week. So a sloth's metabolism is so slow that it sometimes takes a full week for them to process what they eat in a day, um, which isn't you know, very much considered, consider, you know, thinking about some other animals. Um, for instance, our gorillas eat buckets and buckets and buckets of food every day, but not, not our little friends here. So once a week is about the time that we come in and make sure that everything's going well with them, which kind of goes into that observation point that I mentioned before. So with sloths, there's a couple things that I look for. And oh, we're getting a great shot of Siesta's nose right there. So I mentioned that in the wild, they do live in the rainforest. Oh, hello, Siesta. And one of the things about the rainforest that's different from this exhibit is the humidity in the air. So I always want to ch check and see if, if Siesta's nose is a little bit dry. And if it is, what I'll do is I'll take that hose that I use for cleaning and mist the air to get more hydration into the air. And oftentimes that'll be a day that Siesta will kind of pull that hose towards himself and give himself a little bath in the face and take a drink of water. We do always keep a big bowl of water in the exhibit for him. But that's just another way that we can make sure that he's healthy and doing well. And another thing I think we can see right in this great shot he's giving us are his claws right here. So Siesta is a two-toed sloth, and he's got three toes on his back legs. All sloths have three toes on their back. So those claws sometimes get really long. In the wild, when they're climbing along the branches and the trees, it generally takes care of keeping those nails filed down, but not so much here. So every once in a while, it's time to do a nail trim um, on Siesta or Nero or Lunesta. And the, at, here at the zoo, we use a Dremel, just like some of you might take your dog to the groomer and they use a Dremel on the nails. That's how we take care of um, our sloth's nails. Um, so those are some of the observations that I want to look for, you know, just anything in his body that looks different or anything in his behavior that's different that we might want to investigate to make sure he's doing well. And then the last thing we do is uh, enrichment. So you might imagine that it's a little difficult to enrich the life of an animal who sleeps 16 to 18 hours a day, but there is one thing that sloths really like that some people might find interesting. So there's something, I'll, I'll throw out another guess, a trivia question. What is one thing that people like to do in the summertime when it's really hot that a sloth might like to do? It's kind of tricky. I'll give you another hint. It's something you usually wear a special item of clothing to do in the summer. Well, I'm gonna give it away. So some of you who may have come to the zoo in the last few weeks, if you've seen Nero and Lunesta's exhibit, there's a little bit of construction going on because one of the things we're installing for Nero and Lunesta is a swimming pool. Sloths are actually excellent swimmers. Um, yeah. So while si Siesta is not really moving around at all for us right now, um, one of the things that you might find interesting is that they don't have, the way their bodies are built, they don't have an ability 
thank you, macaws, for that lovely shout out. They don't really have an ability to walk using their hind legs. So when they are down on the ground, which is something they don't like to do in the wild because that's where the predators are, they actually have to sort of army crawl by using their front arms to drag themselves along, along the ground. Um, so that's not really comfortable for them. And in the wild, if there happened to be a predator, one of the things they might do is drop down out of the trees into a body of water, maybe a river or a little pond, and swim to get away from that predator. Um, and they're able to swim much faster than they could crawl through the, crawling on the ground or getting through the trees. And so they really actually enjoy water. So we're, we're hoping that Nero and Lunesta will start to show off their new swimming pool. Um, and another way, again, that they enjoy water is with the misting or taking a bath. Nero also really likes to take baths, so siesta must get it from Nero. Do we have any other questions, Jen? Um, yeah, we have a few from here. So Judy was wondering if siesta is a baby. So that's a great question, Judy. So siesta is at already a year and a half. So he is going to be considered a full-grown sloth. Um, although it was nice to see when he was a baby. Baby sloths will stay on top of their mom for a few months while they're nursing. And generally they, they stay right with mom until they're ready to separate and go off onto, the, onto their own. So he is full grown. And Kimberly was asking, why do they move so slow? <laughs> you know, I don't, I, I really wish that Siesta could talk and let us know. So I, I don't really know why they move so slow. I think that I read somewhere, and you know, Jen or Brian, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that they can move as quickly as, what is it, 10 feet per minute or so if they need to. Um, I have seen Siesta zoom, <laughs> sloth zoom around this exhibit when the hose is going too fast or too high and he really doesn't like that noise. Um, maybe at one point when we're, when we're leaving, Brian can take a shot of some of the perching and he will kind of traverse the exhibit to get as far away from that hose on the days that he doesn't like it too much. So he can move when he needs to, but generally he just, they just prefer to sleep. That is a fantastic question. So one of the things I would say my favorite thing about taking care of the animals here at the zoo is enrichment and giving them something in their day that actually makes a difference that they enjoy. So it could be a different way to feed them using maybe a puzzle feeder. It could be scent enrichment. So uh, big cats like baking spices, cinnamon, they like perfume. Some of our carnivores also like to smell and roll around in shavings or straw that other animals have slept in. But auditory enrichment is something we use a lot uh, with our macaws. Maybe they have some music going right now, which is why they're quiet. Um, but we basically just bring around a, a good old fashioned boom box and set it up outside the exhibit and you know play some music. I try to play uh, different radio stations if I can to see if they unscientifically like you know classical music or you know rock and roll or country but that's definitely something that we do. Awesome so Timothy um, was asking where do we rescue them from and how long is their lifespan and asking if they're also endangered. Oh the, those are all fantastic questions. So I'll, I'll try to tackle the endangered question. So this is a Linnaeus two-toed sloth, and they are not critically endangered in the world. There are other types of sloths that are, but these guys do pretty well. There's still good numbers of them left in, in South America and a, and a little bit up into Central America. As to where we rescue our animals, that's a great question. So sloths, especially, um, this particular family of sloths, Nero and Lunesta, came to us from other zoos um, through what we call a species survival program, which is run by our accrediting body, the AZA. And what an SSP is, it's a way to increase genetic diversity among those animals that we have in human care. So we do get rescued animals from other, other different kinds of animals, uh, for instance, Blue, our mountain lion, was abandoned as a cub, and so uh, where he was, that state's fish and wildlife said, hey, can anybody take care of this 
really cute mountain lion club? And we said, of course. Sometimes uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife will have confiscations due to the illegal pet trade. Um, and we sometimes get animals that way. But most of the animals in an accredited zoo like ours either are born in, zoo, in, born in this zoo or come from other zoos. All right, and Amy, who is four, <laughs> wants to know if they are nocturnal. Oh, Amy, I, I think you might have a guess, but yes, they are mostly nocturnal. Um, Lear, <laughs> Nero and Lunesta are a little bit better at waking up, usually when you have food for them. Um, so yes, so most of the time if you come to the zoo and you want to see the sloths moving around, it's a little difficult. They do spend most of their time during the day snoozing, just like our little friend here. Um, the best time to see them possibly moving around is right when the zoo opens, if there happens to be a zookeeper in that exhibit. Uh, there's a chance you might see the sloths moving around, or if Nero and Lunesta finally get used to their pool, maybe we'll get a chance to see them swim. I would say, please come and visit us. I know it's January. I know this weekend is really chilly, but there's lots of animals to see, especially our animals in the windows to the wild building. And we have lots of animals outside who like to be in the cold. So come and, and visit Siesta and Nero and Lunesta and the rest of our animals. And don't forget to make your online reservation and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much. <laughs>